reality is subject to influence. For much of human history, humanity has been conditioned into believing that they are at the mercy of life. That they are like a paper boat on the ocean, being thrown about without any control over what happens and what direction they move in. But what if I was to tell you this isn't even close to the truth. And that in fact, you are a powerful creator that has simply forgotten the abilities that lay deep within you, waiting to be accessed once again. You have so much more control over your life than you realize. In fact, you are meant to choose the direction to go in. But if you choose not to make this choice to choose your own path, it will be chosen for you. In fact, by not choosing, you will end up unconsciously choosing, and it will typically be the pathway that someone has laid out for you, and it almost is never in your best interests. However, in this video, we are going to go over why it is you can manipulate your reality, how to do this powerfully, and we're gonna give you some of the best tools to help you start right away. And this is not just for those who want some more information and they want some more stuff they're gonna hear about but never use. This is for those who want to actually get results, to get some changes, and to apply what you're going to learn. Because as you begin to understand how all of this works, and most importantly, apply it in your daily life, that's when the changes start to occur. So the first thing we need to look at to understanding how we can manipulate our reality is showing you that you're actually more than just a physical being. You see, the reason that you can manipulate reality is because you're not just physical. You're actually mental, spiritual, and physical. We can use this as a foundation. Now, if you think you're just physical, you just have a physical body and that's who you are, well, then it makes sense that you believe you can't manipulate reality, change things, that you're at the whims of life. Because it seems that way when you're only coming from a physical perspective. But you are actually a three-part being, and we can call each of these parts of you, one, the physical, which you're familiar with, but also the mental, and the spiritual sides of you. Now the physical you're already aware of, this is your five senses, this is what allows you to interact on the physical plane. You have a body, you have the ability to taste, touch, smell, all of that kind of stuff here and everything else. Um, and that's one part of you. But there's also the mental part of you. And this is made up of your thoughts. This is made up of the imaging the images that you play in your mind. This is really when you think of anything to, that has to do with thinking, with the mind, with the mental, um, it is in this realm. And that's another side of you, right? But there's also another side called the spiritual side of you. And this is your connection, we can say, to the divine, to that which you actually are. This we can also call your emotional self, the energy in motion. Spirit and energy can be pretty interchangeable as we talk about them here. Now, why is it so crucial to understand that you also have the spiritual and mental side of things? The reason it is so crucial is because what if I was to tell you that the spiritual and mental side of you actually is what more of yourself is? Meaning, you are not as physical as you think you are. Yes, you have a physical body. Yes, you can interact with this physical realm. But in fact, the physical makes up a very tiny percentage of what actually exists in our reality. It's actually only about 0.00001% of what's out there in reality. While the rest, which we can call the inner world, which is made up of the spirit and the mental, is 99.999999%. So how do we begin to manipulate reality? Is we start learning about these other parts of ourselves that you've probably been unconscious about and moving unconsciously with. They've probably been sitting there dormant, you not really using them intentionally, and therefore you haven't been able to make too many changes in your life because you've been focusing solely on the physical to try and change your physical. Instead of going into the other two planes of existence that make up you for which the physical physical actually comes out of. Again, the, that tiny fraction that makes up the physical in our reality comes from that 99.9 .9 plus percent that makes up the spiritual and the mental world. The physical is simply a subset of the inner world, which is spirit and mental, which is the superset. And so once we have the understanding that the physical world actually follows the inner world, the spiritual world, the energetic world. Well, now we have a whole different way in which we can move to manipulate and influence our reality. And here's one example of this and one thing that can really hopefully click a lot of things in place for you, but the idea of cause and effect. Everyone has heard of cause and effect probably from a regular Newtonian physics type of way. So cause of an effect on the physical plane of existence. 
But what if I told you that cause and effect not only extends beyond just the physical, it actually is operating even more so beyond the physical because again, it's operating in that 99.9 .9 plus percent that makes up reality. Cause and effect is happening on the spiritual and mental planes of existence as well. And paying attention to cause and effect on these planes of existence in particular is what's going to help you shift your life rapidly. Okay, so now you hopefully can grasp the idea that you're a three-part being, that the physical reality is actually a tiny percentage of what's actually out there, and in fact comes from the non-physical. The physical comes from the non-physical. The outer world, the physical world, follows the inner world, which is spirit and mentality. In fact, if we were to even look at this from like a pole, it's actually spirit and energy at the very top, which is kind of the most rapid, spontaneous um, form of energy, right? It's at the very top of this pole. And at the very bottom is matter. And the further you go down that pole, the more physical things become. But they're of a like kind. They are the same thing, just at different rates of vibration. And again, the further up the pole you go, the more you're getting into the mental and spiritual parts of yourself. The further down you go, the more physical. Uh, energy is slowed down, it's more condensed, it's more solidified when we get lower on the pole. So now here is the secret to cause and effect when we're looking at this from a grander, a bigger scope, when we're looking at this from more of an overview, taking a step back and looking beyond just the physical. The effects that you notice in the physical, in your physical life, the things come in, are nothing more than things that have occurred due to the causes that you have created on the spiritual and mental planes of existence. Again, those two planes represent that 99.9% .9 of what actually makes up reality. And so when you create more causes intentionally on those planes of existence, they start creating effects in your physical. This is how you start manipulating reality. Because what you're doing, and absolutely what you're doing on the spiritual and mental planes of existence is influencing what is showing up in the physical. It is creating and drawing in what shows up for you in the physical realm of reality, in your physical life. Meaning, if you want a better job, a different relationship, a loving relationship, let's say, more money, whatever it is that you really want to have, even if it's you want to experience more joy, playfulness, peace, whatever else it is in your life, it is through starting that on the spiritual and mental planes that will create the outcomes on the physical in your everyday life because the outer world is following the inner world. And so when you think of cause and effect and activating cause and effect to your advantage, I want you to look at it beyond just the scope of the physical and understand that the effects you are seeing in the physical are coming from causes that were created and activated on the spiritual and mental. This is why you hear such ideas such as you get what you think about most of the time. What are you doing when you're activating that? When you're thinking about something most of the time, you are directing your attention and energy towards that thing, activating it on that plane of existence. You are causing that to happen on that plane of existence by using your attention, your intention, attention, and focus in that direction, which creates effects and changes in your physical. And you can literally think your way into manipulating the physical realm of your reality and also feel your way as well. I would actually expand that quote to you get what you think and and feel about most of the time. However, what you think about will usually have a corresponding feeling, and what you feel about will usually have corresponding thoughts. Meaning, if you're feeling like crap, you're gonna have corresponding thoughts that match that, and if you're feeling amazing, you're usually gonna have corresponding thoughts on that same wavelength as well. But cause and effect does not just happen on the physical plane. In fact, so many of the effects, the manifestations, the things that appear in your life are down to causes that were created and activated and engaged with in the spiritual and mental planes of existence. This is how you begin to manipulate your reality. And don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you uh, hanging uh, to dry here and not give you ways in which you can do this. Because it's great to understand this and to know that our reality is mainly non-physical, not physical, that the physical comes from the non-physical, that the causes on the spiritual and mental planes create most of the effects on the physical. That's great, but how do we do that? We will cover that in this video towards the end. Now, I want to combine together two different analogies 
that can give you another kind of insight into how this works. Now, this first one is called the Lego brick analogy, and it's a great way of looking at how we can potentially influence our reality either physically, like how most people try and do and how futile that can be, versus non-physically. And so imagine that there is a Lego factory and this Lego factory produces all of the bricks that are in your physical life. So everything in your life is a Lego brick. It is physical matter reality, and it's all coming from this Lego factory. Now, the Lego factory represents the non-physical. It represents that 99.9 .9 plus percent, right? It is the thing beyond the physical but it's where all the physical things are coming from. It is coming out of this Lego factory. And everything else in your life is a Lego brick. So this microphone is a Lego brick, these lights, the camera, all that. These are Lego bricks that have come out of the Lego factory, the non-physical, into my physical life. Now, how most people try and go about changing their life is they try and be matter influencing matter, physical, influencing physical, particle influencing particle. And so I look at the physical things in my life and I go, I need to work harder. I need to grind against this thing. I'm gonna try and take these Lego bricks and mold them into something different. But they're already in your physical life, meaning they have already energetically built up to be able to come into your life. And so resisting them is futile and only creates stress and overwhelm. And even if you do fashion something out of the bricks, it's going to be in such a less efficient way than the other way we're gonna go over right now. But this is how most people are trying to change their life. Matter being matter. Taking the Lego bricks that are already in your life, the physical stuff, and kind of punching against them, trying to mold them, trying to create something out of something that's already there. That is matter influencing matter. Now. How is it different when we, instead of trying to be matter influencing matter, we become energy influencing matter or wave influencing particle, right? What happens when we go into the non-physical first in order to influence the physical? It is the equivalent of going into the Lego brick factory and requesting them to make different Lego bricks via your intention and your attention. And so instead of resisting all that comes out and beating ourselves up over it or victimizing because we don't like the Lego bricks in our life, we can actually go into the factory, and again, we're going to go over how we can do this in a practical sense, but we go into the factory and we request new Lego brick molds to be created. Instead of arguing or fighting or resisting the ones that have already come into our life. Now, it is key that when you do this and you do some of the exercises I'm going to give you, even if those bricks don't show up right away, you don't start resisting those bricks and go, where's the mold I requested, right? Because there is something called the law of continuity, and you also don't always know why certain things are coming first before something else, right? If you ordered a meal and then, you know, you wouldn't get upset Let's say if the soup comes out and the entree is not here yet, or they bring out the salt shaker and the pepper shaker and you go, where's my food? It's like, well, hold on, it's coming, but these are coming first, right? So when you are engaging in this, don't get dismayed by whatever Lego bricks do come out. Keep giving your request to the Lego brick factory and it will start giving you new bricks. Now, the other analogy I want to tie into this one is called the radar screen analogy. And I love this one so much. You can think of your physical life or the things that you know about in your life, like the known, we can also call this the mind um, in the sense of what you know about. Um, and you can think of those things like blips on a radar. So these are all the things that are kind of in your attention, right? If you were to look out at your life, you're aware of these things. And how most people go about trying to change, influence their reality, is they look at what's already on their radar screen and they try and piece all these things together or manipulate these things in order to create new results. And that can get you to some places. You know, if you have certain Lego bricks in your life, you can certainly stack them together to create something from those raw materials, right? But when you only do that, when you're only utilizing all that you can see, you cut yourself off from all that you cannot see. And guess what? Most of it exists off the radar screen in this space well beyond anything that you know about or see because you don't know what you don't know. And so when we're matter trying to influence matter all of the time, just trying to take what's on the radar screen and just create from that place or force or whatever else, we cut ourselves off from ev literally everything else beyond that, the things off our radar screen. When we go into the Lego factory and request new bricks, rather than trying to just knock the bricks we have and get frustrated at them and complain about them, then things from off the radar screen, from seemingly nowhere, because they are kind of coming from nowhere, they're not in your life yet, will start to come into your life. These new effects from the causes you are creating in the inner world will start to come in, but they will be off 
your radar screen. If we keep our focus only on what's on the radar screen, which is the physical life, if we keep our focus on only Lego bricks that are already there, we won't be able to attract in the new bricks or the things off the radar screen into our lives. So if you're not following the idea of the outer world following the inner world, if you're not doing that inner work, which we're gonna go over in a second, you have very little influence over your life. And no wonder so many people feel like a paper boat on the ocean just being thrown about by life if they're only coming from the things on their radar screen or they're only coming from a physical perspective, because it does seem that way. But when you open up beyond that, you allow the unknown in. You allow yourself to start entertaining the non-physical more, which is what makes up most of reality. Then things begin to shift, and they can begin to shift very quickly. All right, so now you have more of an idea of how to start manipulating and molding and influencing your reality. I've given you the ideas behind it. I've given you some of the analogies that I think can really help you to hold this in a way that's understandable. Now let's get into some of the things that you can do. And what I'm going to give you is something that we give our clients that is so incredibly powerful. It is a type of meditation, very simple, but when done consistently, it is like going into the Lego brick factory and requesting new bricks. The more you do this, the more effective it becomes. And this is simply a passive active meditation combo. Now, many of you have heard of passive meditation. This is kind of like when you're focusing on just being in the moment, right? Allowing things to be still and observing. And it's a very powerful thing to do. And you've probably heard of more active meditations. Active meditations could be classified as visualizations, for example, where you're not just passively allowing, you're getting engaged and really almost requesting and sending your attention in particular directions. You're active in the process. You're not standing back. You're actually engaged with it, you know, directing your thoughts, directing your energy in a very particular direction. And so what we're going to do is to combine these things. And one thing that a mentor of mine told me uh, that I think is such a powerful way to look at this, you can think of passive and active meditation like a car. And when you're doing the passive meditation, it's like you're basically fixing up the car, putting gasoline in the vehicle, you're essentially prepping it for the journey ahead. And then you make sure all the tires have air, you make sure everything's good to go, the oil is checked, and then with the active meditation, you start driving towards your destination, right? That's when the visualization and the more active part of this comes into play. See, if you don't do the passive part, a lot of people will just try and snap themselves right into active meditation. But let's say you are in a very crazy place mentally in that moment. You're stressed, you know, you're overthinking, you're not feeling so great, and then you try and go into an active meditation, good luck. It's going to be insanely difficult, and you're going to be in a very counter energy and probably visualize more of what you don't want rather than what you do want. But when we take the time to, again, make sure the car is good to go. We take the time to lower our brainwave states, if you understand what I'm saying there, to more of an alpha or theta brainwave state. When we take the time to really take care and get more into that spiritual mental part of ourselves, tune out the physical, tune out the sense data, instead of trying to go right from the sense data into an active meditation. We allow ourselves to really activate that active meditation so much more powerfully. And so the kind of time split that we recommend is doing 10 minutes of passive meditation and then 20 minutes of active. And if you really want to get the gears going, doing 20 minutes of passive and then 40 minutes of active. Now, as you do this, again, if you're new to it, you might find yourself getting distracted. You might find yourself, you know, going off in different directions. It's okay. Just eat, gently bring yourself back. If you are staying in the room, doing the meditation, it's working. And as you keep practicing this, you will get better at it. And even when you're really good at it, you will still have times where you get a bit distracted and whatever, maybe on that day you were a little more in your head, whatever it is. Just as long as you keep getting back up on the horse when you fall off, as long as you just keep going, this is essentially the equivalent of you walking into the Lego factory and requesting new bricks. So again, I really recommend that you start doing this daily. You start having a vision of what you want to bring into your life, something you can connect to powerfully, and you start having in that active meditation that visualization. Right? You start really playing out that scene that you would like to have crystallized in your life, that you would like to move into in your life. With the passive meditation, you can count breath. There are many different ways to do passive meditation. A simple one, again, it's just focusing on your breath in and out and just being really in the moment, just focusing on you know, your breath coming in gently and then gently releasing and just allowing yourself to focus in on that or any other passive meditation that you 
are aware of or are already doing that you find to be very effective. Now, this technique seems very simple, but again, this is the inner size. There's not some complex thing that I'm gonna give you that's like this secret pill to getting the result. If when you have this understanding we went over and then you start doing the inner size, again, activating that 99.9 .9 plus percent, activating the causes on the spiritual and mental um, plane of existence, which this will allow you to do, things begin to move in your life. Now, there is something else I want to mention that's really going to help you with the creation of your reality. And this is a more kind of in the moment thing you can do every day. And in fact, I actually absolutely recommend that you keep coming back to this because it's so crucial and influential in creating your reality. And this is the idea of the positive and negative energy ball. And so you can think of it like this. You have both a positive and negative energy ball. Just to make it simple, we can get more nuanced with it, but let's just say it's a positive, positive emotions, positive energy, powerful um, energy versus negative. You know, negative emotions, negative energy, you know, force-based things, more dense things. And you have both of these balls in your life. And one is typically going to be bigger than the other. And whichever one that you have that is bigger is going to start attracting more to it. It has more gravity. So if you have a bigger positive, of energy ball, it's going to be more easy to hook into, tune into more positive frequencies, think more positive, feel more positive, attract more positive outcomes. But if like most people, you have a much bigger negative energy ball, the same thing occurs. It's much easier for you to tune in to negative thoughts, negative feelings, things that feel more dense, to attract in more circumstances that are meant as feedback and try to get you back on path, things that don't feel good, outcomes that you wouldn't say that you want, right? And so the reason I want to bring this to your attention is because you want to start working on expanding your positive energy ball and decreasing and kind of deflating that negative energy ball in your life. Because once you get your positive, negative, uh, positive energy ball to a point where it is much larger and the gravity of it is drawing things in much more effectively, all of this becomes easier, but it takes a bit of time to get to that point because you are in what's called infinite action, meaning you are sending out an energetic signal 24 seven. And whatever energy ball is bigger, especially in those unconscious moments, that's what you're going to be sending out. This is a mixture of your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, what you say is all sending out this energetic signature and frequency 24 seven. There's no turning it off. You are a creator, a co-creator. You're always sending out that signal and you are always receiving back the equivalent of that signal in thoughts. Uh, equivalent thoughts, corresponding thoughts, and energy and inspiration in the actions that you're going to take in what you want to say, all of these different things. And so especially as that negative energy ball is bigger, you want to be even more vigilant about your thoughts, about what you say, about how you're feeling, so that you can intentionally start doing certain things to change that, to squeeze that negative energy ball until it's more deflated and start elevating your positive energy ball. This is why doing the inner size is one of the best things that you can do. Because when you do the inner size and you have a meditation, you are expanding the positive energy ball because you're thinking about your dreams, your visions, the things that excite you. And as a result, you're no longer giving attention to the negative energy ball, which starts to deflate as a result. So you especially want to take stock of how you are thinking as you're going through your day and how you are feeling as well. And ultimately, if you want to get really extreme, with this, and you don't have to do this, but it, it's a very powerful thing to do, is whenever you catch yourself thinking in a way that you do not want to be thinking, observe it, separate yourself from it, so understand it's not, you're not the thought, and then once it's passed by, choose a different thought, choose a different direction to move it. When you notice that you're in a feeling that you don't want to be entertaining, maybe it's anger, maybe it's, it's frustration, whatever it is. Again, same thing, pause. Don't get more hooked into it. Observe it, feel it, allow it to go on its own course, and then choose differently. Choose to focus on gratitude from there. Choose to focus a little bit higher than wherever that's at, wherever you're at right now. Because this is what's gonna contribute and is always contributing to the positive or negative energy ball. And so the more times you can pattern interrupt and do this, the more you're gonna be, again, taking some energy away from that negative and feeding it and watering more the positive energy ball in your life. Now, one great way, a great exercise to discover where you might be at when it comes to which one do I have? You know, which one is bigger in my life? How big is it? Do I have a massive negative energy ball? Do I have a massive positive? What is it? It's to do what's called a time log. And a time log is exactly as it sounds. You are going to track what you do, what you're thinking, how you're feeling throughout the whole day. 
down to the minute. The reason this, this is so powerful is because one, you're going to become more aware. M moments where you would normally go unconscious, you're going to remain conscious. And two, at the end of the day, you're going to notice, wow, I spent three hours on social media today. I wonder if that's contributing to my negative um, energy bowl or my positive. Wow, I watched that show for a lot today. Wow, I was in a lot of negative emotions today. Why was that? Wow, I was very thinking very negatively. It'll show you your blind spots and the gaps and what you need to work on and make you aware of it. And when you make the unconscious conscious, it powerfully allows you to shift, not only in knowing what to do moving forward to remedy this, but actually when you make certain things that are unconscious conscious, in that very moment, you're already starting to build your positive energy ball more. You're already just starting to change yourself in a way that allows for different results. Now, if you want to dive even deeper into cause and effect and learn about something that's called the cause of all causes, it's one of the most crucial things. You can go watch this video next where we dive into the cause of all causes that activates that 99.9 .9 plus percent more powerfully than basically anything else. Again, once you have an understanding of what we've gone over today and you started to apply it, I would highly recommend checking this out next.